Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to continue on our discussion of uh, forensic data acquisition. Uh, and now we are going to be using command line to do acquisition. So first, we use FTK Imager in Windows using the uh, GUI interface, or a, kind of an interface that you can interact with, basically. Um, and then we used uh, Gaimager in Linux, which also had a, a GUI interface, and uh, we saw it was quite quite fast in its acquisition. So both of those were quite easy and relatively fast, um, but you can't really automate them. Uh, you can't add them to some sort of uh, program chain uh, very easily. So a tool that we will be using today is purely from the command line, and it works for um, more uh, tools like it, or uh, this tool works in uh, Windows and OS X and Linux. Uh, you do have to have administrative privileges to use it, so uh, it, just be aware of that if you're ever doing a live um, live acquisition. Um, but uh, assume that this is our forensic workstation. Our forensic workstation is Linux, and it's running Ubuntu Linux. Um, and I want to run uh, the tool from the command line. So first, I actually have to open up a terminal. Um, and I have this terminal open here, and I'm already inside my cases folder. So I have my cases 001 images, and then my exhibit uh, is 001. I have this uh, four gigabyte USB stick uh, plugged into a Tableau uh, write blocker, and the write blocker is connected to my computer and my forensic workstation uh, using a USB cable. Um, right, so now I have the, the disk plugged in and I have a terminal open. Now I need to figure out which disk or uh, what identifier um, did my computer detect the disk as. So we can we can do that in Linux by running sudo, which means that I, I get super user privileges, um, sudo fdisk-l, okay, sudo fdisk-l. And then this will basically give me a list of all of the disks in the system, but I'm really interested in this one at the bottom. So disk slash dev slash SDE, 3.8 gigabytes. And this looks like uh, the disk that I want. I see that it has 512 byte um, sectors um, and disk label is DOS, disk identifier. This looks like the disk that I'm interested in. I'm also interested in the number of sectors that it has. And in this case, it's 512 uh, bytes. Um, if I want to verify uh, this disk, then I can do sudo mount. If I just type mount, then we can go through and find, uh, for example, uh, dev sde, which is what I suspected before, and it's mounted on uh, media uh, Joshua test USB. And I know that this is, uh, well, I, I assume that this is the name of the, the USB stick, and it's type vfat. So this vfat tells me that it's definitely um, my disk or the suspect disk because I know that I do not have any vfat um, uh, disks installed in this system. So I know that this is it. If I want to, um, for example, if I know what file system is installed, if I know it has a partition and what file system I can use grep, um, let me clear this out real quick, clear so I can use sudo mount and then pipe that into grep and do vfat. And then we say we see boot EFI, but this is for booting. And then I see dev SDE media Joshua. Okay, so I know that this is my suspect disk. So now I want to uh, collect or I want to memorize or I should be documenting at least uh, this dev SDE. And this is the physical disk identifier. And I want to make a physical disk image of this disk. Okay, so I'm going to clear this out. Uh, I'm already in my uh, case folder, and I'm already in the folder that will store um, my acquired disk image. And the tool I'm, we're going to use is called DCFLDD. Okay, and this uh, is a version. This tool is um, actually pretty common. Uh, the tool that's built into OS X and Linux is by default just DD. Uh, but it, DD doesn't have as many features as DCFLDD. DCFLDD is kind of an enhanced version of DD um, that has some some interesting features uh, for use in uh, for forensic investigators, basically. So we will type uh, actually sudo. I need to be 
sudo because I need access to the actual disk. So sudo dcfldd, and then I want to put my input interface. And this is the important part. I want to put my input interface or if equals and then dev sde. And this is the disk that I am going to copy. If you get the disk that you're going to copy and the disk that you're copying to mixed up, you will overwrite some data. So make sure you, um, make sure you get this right, right? IF input interface. So DCFLDD IF equals dev SDE. And that's making a copy of the, uh, the disk that I have. Okay. And then DCFLDD has the ability to make hashes, uh, while it's reading the data. So we want to say hash equals md5 and sha1. Um, now remember ftk imager and guyimager I, I made uh, md5 and sha1 hashes in both of them and now I'll do it for this as well and then I can say md5 log equals uh, md5.txt and that will just say where do I save the md5 log to uh, sha1 log equals uh, sha1.txt and it will save the SHA-1 hash to a different log. And then I can say hash uh, convert after. Okay. So in this case, it's going to um, basically do all the, the, the hashing afterwards. Byte size here is 512 because I want to basically be copying sectors here. So I want to uh, uh, make this the same size as the sector size. And then some extra flags, um, basically to make uh, this run a little bit better if it runs into any errors or anything like that. Um, and then I want to split the image, split the disk image. Now before uh, we were splitting the Im disk image by what, 1,500 megabytes in, in both programs prior to this. So 1,500 M for meg, 1,500 M uh, sections and then I want to say split format equals and I'll go uh, zero 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 okay which is very similar to the way that guy Major was doing it uh, so this will give it the the zero 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 extension uh, a zero 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 extension which will look exactly like the way guy Major, uh, made it look and then of and this is my output interface. So IF input interface, OF output interface. IF is where I'm reading the data from. OF is where I'm saving the data to. Um, so it's very important that we <laughs> we get the output interface right, because if you don't, then you, you could overwrite data. You could override your hard drive and lose all of your data. So uh, be very careful whenever you run this uh, command. Make sure you're running it in a test system until you really know what you're doing. Um, and in this case, I'm going to call it um, USB uh, test USB. So the output interface, I'm just writing it in this case to a file in the directory uh, cases 001, images 001, and then it will be test USB and it will have the extension 000. Okay, so whenever we run that, let's click OK. Now it's writing the data. So let's go to the 001 file and see what and uh, see what's going on. I'll move this up so we can see what's going on. Okay, uh, so we can see the the first part of the image. Okay, first part of the image is created. It has test USB dot zero zero zero, and then whenever it got to uh, one point six, basically 1.5 gigabytes. Then it made the second part, test USB 001. Now it's test zero, test USB 002. If I go to md5.txt, well, it hasn't saved anything yet because it's not finished yet. Okay. So now it's finished. We should have, yeah, the md5 value. And if you recall from, uh, Geimager, our md5 value was F7A79. Uh, so this looks like it is the same value as before, and our SHA-1 value is in this SHA-1 log. Um, the reason that this was so quick is because we uh, actually just finished the Geimager example, and the disk image 
or the disk uh, data was still in cache or it's in memory. So this was reading from memory and not from the actual physical disk. So be aware of this for the, for this example. Um, I used it because it makes the video much faster, uh, but be aware if you read the disk once, and especially if you're in a Linux system, um, you have to clear your caches, clear your memory cache uh, before you read the disk again. Otherwise, you won't be reading directly from the suspect disk. You will be reading from your cached memory. Uh, so that's pretty much it for um, copying data from the command line. Because this is a command, um, really the advantage of this is First off, it's relatively simple. You just need this very small program. You don't have to have a whole interface. If you can just remember a command like this, um, now not all of these options are necessary, but if you can remember this command, um, then it's very easy to use. But you can also write it in different scripts. So in forensics, we use a lot of different scripts, uh, and you could basically put this into a program that just uh, essentially runs automatically. Um, so it makes it much easier for you to to run, basically. Um, this tool works in uh, Linux, OS X, and Windows. Um, there are versions uh, for all the different, well, most different operating systems, or you can compile it yourself. Um, so um, this is just to get you used to working with the command line a little bit. Um, the more you can work with command line, the better, um, the easier things will be for you. Uh, in doing kind of automation in forensics. So that's uh, pretty much it. I guess we can uh, just use, like last time, the same method for verifying our hashes. So we have our MD5 hash text here, and we have uh, F77, F7A79. And if I go back in and I do cat, and then test USB star, right, that's going to read all of the data from the three different parts of my disk image and then I'm going to pipe that into MD5 sum and it will make the hash value for that and we'll open this back up just to make sure. So now it's reading all the data and then we get F7A79. So all of the uh, images that were collected uh, they do verify. We do have the correct value. So again I would make um, since I've just acquired my data, I would make an archive of this data. I would uh, basically copy the data, make an archive of the data, make sure everything, all the hashes matched, and then uh, uh, save this data someplace else uh, so it doesn't get damaged. Um, yep, yeah, so that's it for copying data using Linux command line and DCFL DD. Thank you very much.